How about struggle. eight through eleven? Struggle bus. Find a dot b. I believe that refers to the dot product. Which would be why it says a dot, dot b. b. So and that I mean there is no vector multiplication, so it's got to be the dot product, right? I mean that's what I would think. So uh, now we're out of stuff I've already oh, done. Okay. So you're just gonna have to look at. We'll just make sure that we're doing it. All right, right. doing it right. Okay, so. Efforting. Uh, the dot product is first times first plus second times second. That's so. all there is to it. There's Don't make this hard. This is really uh, not a bad concept for us on this one. So this is 4. 4 plus 28. Plus 28. 32 skis. And that's all there is to it. Uh, so how about number 9? We need to find the angle between the given vectors to the nearest tenth of, the, of a degree. There's a formula for doing I that. I sense an inverse trig function in our future. That's That tends to be the case whenever you have an, an angle that you want to find. We tend to have to do inverse trig functions. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Crazy. It's weird. So we actually have to do kind of a lot of work for this. We need to do u dot v, the magnitude of u, and the magnitude of v. And you don't want to carry any decimals through on this. So when you punch it down in your calculator, you want to leave it totally radicalized. Yeah. So let's see what, what happens with the dot product first times first plus second times second. And that gives you 12 minus 27, which is negative 15, right? Yep. Okay, then we find the magnitude of each. So the magnitude of u, remember that that's what absolute value bars. Right, that's distance kind of from important. zero, how far are you traveling? Yeah, absolute so value. three squared plus negative three squared, which is Square, square root, root of 18. 18. There's no need to simplify don't, that. Don't simplify that because we're going to have to just decimal it out in, inside arc cosine. Right. Uh, then the square root of 4 squared plus 9, nine squared, squared, which is 16 plus 49. No, 16 plus, six, plus 81. 16 plus 81. Oh, then I think I... Okay, 16 plus 81, which is... 97. 97. Good thing I didn't post those answers because I did that. I, I said it was 65. My bad. Wow. Um, That's really awkward. Yeah, mm. let's plug this in. Arc cosine of... The top is the uh, dot negative product. 15. So negative 15. Over, now there's a couple different ways you can do this to make sure you do it right. One is putting parentheses on the bottom. if Or your calculator may do fractions for you. So put both of those on the bottom. Or if you want to be super lazy, you can actually put 18 and 97 underneath the same square root multiplied together. Then you won't have Ooh. to worry about parentheses. Take that back. Take that back. You're speaking witchcraft. I got 111.038. That's good. That's what it's supposed to be. We want the nearest tenth of a degree. So 111.0. Cool beans. Cool indeed. Okay. Let's try this whole uh, vector projection thing. Let's do. Okay, there is a formula. I'm going to write it over here because I have a feeling I could run out of room on this problem. The projection of u onto v is... u dot v over magnitude v squared times The vector v. v. So it wants us to write this as a sum of two orthogonal vectors. So this right here is going to give us the first one. Right. And then to get the second one, we're going to do u minus u1. Right. That's going to give us That'll give the us second u. u. In the name of love. So we need to do u dot v. Let's do it. That's going to be negative 8 times 1, which is negative 8. Yeah. Plus 2 times 2, which is 4. So that's negative 4. Okay. The magnitude of v, but we're squaring it, which means we don't need to put no, the square root. It's just 1 root. squared plus 2 squared. It's 5. Well, how do you like that? How... Do you like that? So let's put it into the projection formula. All right. Uh, the dot product's on top, negative 4. The magnitude squared's on bottom, 5. We're multiplying it into V. Because we want this vector to go the same direction that V is going. Right. That's why we have to do it this way. Yeah, so this is... Um, negative 4 fifths. Yeah, negative 4 fifths, comma... Negative 8 fifths. Negative 8 fifths. That right there, my friends, is U1. That's U1. And then to find the other u, we have to do our original u minus, minus what that. we just found. Right. So our original u is negative 8 comma 2. We're going to subtract negative 4 fifths comma negative 8 right. fifths. 
and that's going to give us what u2 is. Now, if we're going to do this with fractions, we do need to find common denominators for these. These need to be over 5, so this is negative 4. 40 over 5 and 10 over 5. And, and now, then when we now subtract, we're lined up ready to go. When so, we subtract, we could do plus, plus, plus. Yeah, you could. You could do that. Okay, so because we're distributing the negative into both of these. So that's so going to give us... So negative 36 fifths. Yeah, and then 10 and then plus 8 is 10 18. plus 8 is 18 fifths. So there you go. That's U2. And then um, you could write this now since it asks for to us... It says write the vector as a sum right. of two orthogonal vectors. So what the key has and what you might find if this were to be multiple choice, which I don't know if it would be. I mean, it might be, it might not. It could be, there's a chance. You'd actually see the answer written like this or maybe in decimal randomly. Yeah, decimal form. But, uh, oh, 18 over five, yeah, 18 over not five. 18 over right. six. No, 18 over five. That so, right there is the yeah. sum of the two and that equals u. Right. All right. So what does this orthogonal business mean? Well, that's the next question. Orthogonal is just a fancy word for determining if something is perpendicular or not. Yes. The cool thing about perpendicular vectors is their dot product equals zero. Right. So that's the first thing we want to do is check for orthogonality. I don't know if we actually <laughs> can use the word like is that. Is that in Webster's? Uh, I don't know. Orthogonality. I, uh, I don't know. So we do the dot I product. I like it. And we say, okay, that's 48 minus 48. Oh! That equals zero. Now, here's those the are way. Our, those them, them are orthogonal. Here's the way that uh, tends to happen whenever teachers write reviews and tests. It, this has three choices, right, for the answer. Orthogonal, parallel, or neither. Right. On the review, it's, I've circled zero, but I'm really circling orthogonal. Our answer is orthogonal on the review. What are the odds that it's I, actually going to be orthogonal okay, on I'm the gonna test. Okay, I'm going to just go out on a limb and say probably it won't be. It probably won't be. But now that we've actually thrown that out there, it, it, it could now, be. Now it could be. It could uh, be. But it might not be. So let's just walk through how we would know if something is parallel, just for kicks. Well, just for kicks, what you could do is, uh, you know, if you're talking about things that are parallel, we're talking about slopes that have to be the same. And, and slope is y over x. So if the ratio of the first vector y over x and the ratio of second vector y over x is the same, then they are parallel. They would be parallel. So in this case, we'd have negative two over eight, which simplifies to negative one fourth. Right. And then we'd have 24 over six, which simplifies to be four. Those are not the same. So Those it's are not opposite parallel. reciprocals, which is why they're orthogonal. Right, that's mm -hmm. true. So uh, that's how you'd tell if they're parallel or not. Indeed. Okay, I'm gonna try.